Malachi chapter 4. Final chapter in the Old Testament. From Genesis 1 to the final chapter, we made it. I think four years <clears throat> of many troubles and problems and going through week by week. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Second Thessalonians 1, 1 and 8. It's not the day you want. Burning. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Stubble burns. This is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming with vengeance. He's coming as fire. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Judgment of the nation. These are the goats. Save the Lord of hosts. That it shall leave neither root nor branch. Matthew 3, 9-12. through 12. That's what, that's what uh, John the Baptist told him. The axe is laid to the root of the tree. Quote from the Bible. But. Unto you that fear my name. Verse 1 is the wicked. Verse 2. Shall the Son. Capital S-U-N. Of righteousness. So the second advent is likened to the sun coming up. That's the case. The church is in the period of night. Darkness. Shall rise with healing for the Jews. Hosea 6, 1 through 3. In his wings. So what kind of picture would you get here that's mythology? Jesus Christ is coming on a white horse, isn't he? Well, if you were to put wings on that horse, what would it be? It'd be Pegasus. Healing in his wings, it's, it's, it's an expression, an illustration of as a hiding place for chicks. And ye shall go forth, the Jews, and grow up as calves of the stall. Now here are calves of the stall. Here are beasts. They're newborn. They're taken care of. They're fed. They're given a portion. They're looked after. They're well cared for. They're not left out in the fields. Like we've seen over and over with the sheep being described. You know, they're just everywhere in every place and no one's taken care of. Well, here's an animal that is being taken care of. He's housed. He's fed. He has his place in the stall. And ye, the Jews, shall tread down the wicked. The Jews, the Christians, and Jesus Christ will get, get dominance. Dominion, victory over wicked people. They may win now. They may get the best of us now, but the, that's just a battle. That's not the war. The war ends when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back and just utterly destroys them. Then it's over. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet, in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. So we've got two pictures here of a group of people. Scripture with scripture. That's going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, is going first. Revelation says, Those saints... Joel 2 says, we're going to follow. This verse says, they're going to also follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The only ones ahead will be the wicked. And those nations that have done right, the sheep nations, Well, what did Jehovah's, Jehovah's saves do? 
He turned to the two spies and says, go in there, get that woman and her family out by the red thread, wasn't it? Go get them out. And when they got them out, then they went in the city and destroyed it all. Jericho was a cursed city. The world is a cursed city. Stories in the Old Testament replay in historical, which would be for our current affair or future events. History will repeat itself. So you better study history correctly. We are seeing the story of Jericho all over again. A Gentile woman who has helped the Jews is released. And everybody else who chased the Jews and tried to kill the Jews are destroyed. With a shout. Did you get that one? With a shout. Not with weaponry. Remember, okay, now, now, let's look at verse 2. Son of Righteousness, capital S-U-N. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember ye the law of Moses. Get that name. The law of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. My servant. Moses was a servant of God. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb. Exodus 20. For all Israel. Not the church. Not the Gentile. With the statutes and the judgments. Leviticus. Deuteronomy. We have the son. We have Moses. Behold. I will send you Elijah. The prophet. Moses. My servant. Elijah. The prophet. The law of Moses. The prophet is Isaiah. That is your Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets. Moses represents the Law. Elijah represents the Prophets. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the Prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So who shows up in Matthew 17, verse 10? Moses and Elijah. What would I have told you had Israel gotten right? When Jesus explains John the Baptist, if the nation had received him and not turned him over, as they will turn Jesus Christ over, John the Baptist would have become Elijah and the kingdom would have come. Because Peter, James, and John sees three men on the Mount of Transfiguration, and Jesus was glorified. Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. They have a little rap session. Jesus is checking with Moses. Is all everything that is fulfilled in the law concerning me right now? As far as I go, right where we are, is everything confirmed and finished, Moses? And I don't know if Moses took out the scroll and, yep, it's all finished. Elijah, according to the prophets and everything they've written to me right now this time, are all the prophecies concerning me 
in the prophets fulfilled. Yes, sir. Because the Bible speaks about in the gospel, they spoke of his death. So when Jesus is on the cross, he says three remarkable words. It is finished. What is finished? Salvation? Absolutely not. The 48 prophecies of his first advent. As discussed with Moses and Elijah. Now, had, now I don't want to talk about had Israel and all, but we don't know. They did not. But had Israel received Jesus Christ as their Messiah, he would still have suffered died. Because the gospel is Jesus Christ died what? According to scriptures, right? He was buried and arose again the third day what? According to scriptures. So he would have to die, be buried, and rise again. That, that's scriptural. How do you know that the nation did not receive Jesus Christ as their Savior? Ask the disciples. The woman come. We seen Jesus. He's alive. The angels proclaim to us. What was it? What was the disciples' attitude? Yeah, right. Sure. Unless I put my fingers in the Thomas, bold Thomas. I don't believe you. His own disciples didn't get it. Never mind the nation. But had they received Hosanna, Jesus Christ in the highest, he would have gotten victory. So Revelation tells us, now get this, and Revelation does not name. But before the great coming of the day of the Lord, we see in Malachi 4, we see two gentlemen step up. One turns the water into blood. And then there's a great drought through the land. Who would those two men be in Scripture? Moses and Elijah. What? He just pictured Moses and Elijah having fun. Hey, watch this, but with the bottle of water, Elijah. What? What are you going to do? Wow. I remember reading that about in the Bible. You turn that war into blood. That's very good. And the Bible says they have they have caused. <coughs> The blood of the saints. Thou art worthy to drink the blood. Elijah goes, hey, you stop having all the fun. Let me have some fun now. Sure. Remember what remember what I did in the Bible? Remember what James says? Uh, let me go real quick. Let get the... I'm going wrong with her. Uh, if I can find it real quick. If I can't, it's no big deal. Um, I think it's the last chapter. Maybe, maybe not. James gives how many days, how many years? And 517. 517. Elias was a man subject to like passes as we are. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained on earth by the space three years and six months. That's half of the Jacob's tribulation. So, Peter, James, and John saw a preview on that Mount of Transfiguration. Who, who else saw it? John saw it again when he's put into right in the book of Revelation. Because there he goes. There's my two anointed ones. Hey, I've seen those two men. Going back, he, they were on the mountain with Peter, James, and me. And they're found in Malachi. The Son, capital S-U-N. Second coming. Moses, the author of the law. Elijah, the principal of the prophets. Do you know Israel has violated both of them? And Jacob's trouble was because they had violated both of them. Israel cannot stand up to Moses and Elijah themselves and say, we've done right. Never mind God.
You can't get by Moses and Elijah, a Jew. There's no way. Because if they would have, they would have received Jesus Christ. Say, okay, let's send them off to Calvary. And we will all wait. And the whole nation would have waited at the empty tomb. Okay. Oh, boy, we got two more minutes to the third day. One more minute. 59, 58, 50, and they would have been all there. And you know what? You know what would have been written? How that stone rolled away. Who recorded the stone being rolled away? No one, because no one was there. The ground shaked, and the Roman keepers and the and the the, uh, the centurions of the uh, I forget what they called the Jewish Senate. They took off. When Mary and the women came, the stone was already rolled. Remember, they were, they didn't even believe. They start walking there. They got the spice. Well, wait a minute, Mary. We got a problem here. What, what's the problem? Who's going to roll that stone away? Oh, didn't think about it. And they walked and they saw it was already gone. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet. Luke 1.13. John the Baptist. Check those two characters out. Elijah, you're reading the Bible. Where did Elijah come from? You're reading along, and Elijah went up to Ahab. Who, who's this character? Where did he come from? And as far as the world in Israel was, who was really John the Baptist? Okay, we learned about his birth. But all of a sudden, boom, he, he shows up in the wilderness and he's preaching. And he's got this baptism thing. Where did that come from? Where did Elijah come from? Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Revelation 11, 3-6. Moses died. And was buried. And going by Jude had some kind of after death rapture, didn't they? Anything? The devil came down and said, hey, 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 body snatcher. No, wait a minute. No, that, that's a Hollywood movie. Excuse me. You can't do that, Michael. Hey, in the name of the Lord God of all, I can do this. Get away from me. God rebuke you. So Moses' body is taken. Elijah and Elisha are going along. <coughs> They're visiting these cities. Elijah, you know, I want to be just like you. You know, if you can see me, but we we'll go. I'm gonna go to the next city. Don't you know the Lord's gonna take your servant, Elijah? Yeah, I know. Just shut up, stay here. And they keep on going, and then here comes the, the, the chariots of horses and, and fire, and Elijah's rapture. His mantle comes down on the ground. Elijah picks it up, and he takes on the, the ministry of Elijah. Moses died, I never got in the land, because they made me angry, right, because of the water. Elijah went to glory in a state of depression. Check it out. His ministry was done when Jezebel threatened him, and he went in the cave and hid out, and the Lord gave him food, trying to straighten him, but he never recovered out of that. And when he shows up to Elijah, well, yeah, go back and kiss your family. Just leave me alone. Elijah's taken away in a rapture. Moses and Elijah show up in the tribulation period and they lose their necks. One dies twice. One gets raptured and then dies the first time. And then what do you read after Moses and Elijah? I think it was the seven days. Their bodies left. They're having Christmas. Tis the season, greetings, passing presents, and then the Spirit, the Lord came in, and they stood up, and they heard a voice. Now Moses dies twice and is raptured. Elijah dies once and is raptured twice. And you still got a little time. Then, then, S-U-N of righteousness comes with you in his wings. It quite be possible any Jews that are left from that 
We read that somewhere. And if you read Malachi 4 and 5 and go back to verse 2, we better prepare because here he comes. It's right there. And as I said, I've been told, and I don't know, it could be a lie. People have lied to me. But I've been told that a person's gone over selling peaches and threw a whole bunch of Bible, I don't know, Old Testament, New Testament, I don't know, gone over there for the Jews when they do go there. The Bibles have been hidden for them to find. The question is, will they recognize Moses and Elijah? You got to be careful what you teach in Sunday school. If you get off Exodus and the route out of Egypt for a clown, for a boy in his boat, or whatever, Sally with a brand new swing, whatever it is, you go through them kind of stories and you take away the Bible stories, and here's a gentleman that shows up, he's turning the water into blood, and you have not taught your children that story in the Bible. How are they going to know who this character is? Give me permission to go to the college that's behind me that I got and getting a diploma from. And let me ask 200 people at random. Let me just ask them five questions and see what the answers are. Who is Jesus Christ? Plain and simple. Can you name or how many apostles can you name? Do you know about Jonah? Do you know who? I mean, just simple questions like that. Are they going to know? But if I bring up Veggie Tales, if I bring up Patch the Pilot, if I bring up all these other, are they going to know more of them about them than the Bible story? I hope Jewish children are being brought up to know when that guy changes that water into blood. Moses. I hope when that guy says three and a half years of no rain. Elijah. Then you can open up your Bible and say, uh-oh, there's a third one coming. There's a sequel coming. And he shall turn, and it says, behold, I will send Elijah. And he, Elijah, shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to the fathers. Elijah is going to do some kind of revival in the nation of Israel with the heart. That's the revival in the Bible. It's not people saying a prayer, it's not people showing up to church, it's not getting your membership, it's not having big pockets full of, uh, of money, it's your heart. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. Now, if Elijah didn't do this, or will not do it, least I come, the one that has the healing in the wings, and smite the earth with a curse. Genesis 3, the earth was smitten with a curse. I can remember what chapter, chapter seven, seven or eight, the great flood of Noah's day. That was judgment. There are Jews who are going to be saved at the second advent of Jesus Christ. How do you know? Because he's not going to smite the earth with a curse. He's going to bring a thousand year reign with him sitting on David's throne. How's that? Malachi tells us there's victory after the second advent. There is victory to the Jew in the second advent. 
because as all the books that we've read in the millennium except for the snake the serpent all the curse is removed so Malachi is ending his book ending the Old Testament shows that there is victory in the second advent in Jesus Christ that's prophecy 